We had a huge parish, a beautiful church. I mean it. And how wonderful the bell was. Dear Lord, how could they destroy it? And what did they do with it? I don't know. I really don't know. I remember I went to the other village to see it. The bell was broken in half, and yet it was massive. It really was the biggest thing ever. On this icon, you can see the traces of sabre blows. When soldiers came to shut the church down in the Tver diocese, they broke in and slashed at this icon. Even the workers charged with dismantling these treasures had trembling hands, as they literally smashed them into small pieces. And all of this happened in complete secrecy. I witnessed it personally. They melted everything in a single crucible. Bronze, copper, silver, every metal used for the bell. The original shapes vanished, and a bust of Lenin appeared in their place. We lived in Petrograd. There, all churches and monasteries had been bombed. All of them had been destroyed. There were no icons left, the walls got painted over, they turned churches into public lavatories. In the winter of 1934, many clergy, priests, monks and deacons were sentenced to be shot. They also came for the parish elders and just ordinary parishioners. The cold was awful, digging graves was very hard, the ice was two and a half meters thick. So the powers that be gave the order to drown them in the Irtish River. Many of them put up resistance and stood their ground, so that some of them had to be helped on their way with the butt of a rifle. With priests it was different. They would come up to the hole in the ice on the frozen river, cross themselves and say, May God have mercy on you, because you do not know what you are doing. With these words, they would pull up their cassock and jump into the hole. The huts we used to live in had been built specifically for nuns. On one occasion, when we were digging for something in that area, we came across bones and skulls. They were small, they clearly belonged to women. When I was in eighth grade at school, one day I saw two people sitting in the headmaster's office and they were talking about me. We know, they told me, that you go to the Catholic Church. Yes, I do, I replied. We want to take you to the anti-religious museum. They hired a guide to walk me around the various relics, bones and instruments of torture in the museum. After three days they came back, and then again. They took me there three times and forbade me to tell anything to my parents. We attended church regularly. We were a group of three or four people. We kept on going until they found us out and arrested us. My students asked me, was it really dangerous to go to church? Yes, very much so. Once when I decided to go to the Feast of the Epiphany, I made arrangements in case I would not return, because I was sure that the following day, or maybe that same day, I would be sent to Siberia. That was our state of mind going to church. Look, everything had been destroyed, almost all churches, every religious school, and yet the Church of Christ rose again from its own ashes, and it will always do so. This does not occur through human effort, and it will always be so. Even if there was nothing left to build on, God will recreate his church again, even out of rubble. Thank you.